Hello students, so in this video we will discuss about one modern aspect of plant breeding that is tissue culture, tissue culture and actually earlier we discussed that by conventional methods the scientists have developed many different varieties which are uh, already released into the market and some of them were uh, high yielding varieties some of them uh, got uh, uh, okay improved food quality and some are uh, disease resistant and uh, some of them are uh, insect pest resistant varieties but uh, the problem with this conventional breeding is that it is a slow process and the demand for food is increasing but uh, this cultivation is not uh, uh, keeping pace with the demand because it is a slow process. That is why a faster method a fast method of cultivation has been developed and that is called uh, tissue culture. And in, and in tissue culture, what we find is we culture the plants from the plant cells or we culture the plants from uh, the tissues or we culture the plants from uh, the organs of the plant. And uh, uh, this is uh, the definition of tissue culture. Maintenance and growth of plant cells, tissues and organs on a suitable culture medium in vitro. In vitro means not under natural conditions, in lab conditions using uh, either test tube or conical flask or petri dish. And uh, we are not providing uh, the natural medium that is not the soil and uh, it is what called culture medium. So that is what uh, the definition of tissue culture. Maintenance and growth of plant cells, tissues and organs on a suitable culture medium in vitro is called uh, tissue culture. Uh, originally this is in vitro culture. And uh, uh, one word has became popular among uh, the people that is tissue culture. Okay, whatever it may be. And uh, uh, in the definition itself, uh, we are using what different uh, parts of uh, the plants. And what you call that uh, parts of the plant? The plant part which is cultured is called explant. So what is explant? The plant part which is cultured or which is used for culturing is called what explant. And know that uh, there is one uh, terminology here and that is called totipotency. And this term was uh, coined by Morgan, T.H. Morgan. And know that what is this uh, totipotency? The capacity to generate a whole plant from any cell or from uh, explant is called uh, totipotency. Means what we are uh, generating the whole plant from a single cell or from uh, uh, a tissue or from uh, uh, an organ. So that is called uh, totipotency. Okay. And what are uh, uh, the conditions or aspects that are required for uh, tissue culture? Okay, and uh, the main thing that we have to provide a medium for uh, culturing the plants. And this medium is called culture medium or nutrient medium. And what uh, uh, it contains? So it contains uh, sucrose as carbon source, inorganic salts, vitamins, amino acids, 
and growth regulators which are required for cell division and uh, okay differentiation of the organs or shoot differentiation root differentiation and cell division hormones are required and which hormones are uh, used in this medium are added in the medium about uh, auxins and cytokinins but was not natural auxins are uh, uh, added in the nutrient medium so a synthetic auxin known as 24d what is this 24d 24 dichlorophenoxy acetic acid and don't forget that this is used even as a weed side but here we are using it for the purpose of cell division and cell elongation and root differentiation and the cytokinin is also not natural cytokinin we are using a bap that is what benzyl amino purin benzyl amino purin so this benzyl amino purin is abbreviated as bap and once uh, we have uh, uh, prepared a nutrient medium or culture medium and uh, the ph should be tested and it should be maintained and uh, the ph should be 5.7 okay right so the next uh, thing is that when you have prepared the nutrient medium and uh, uh, when you are uh, adding a cell or tissue or ex plant or any part of the plant so then uh, uh, some microbes may attack instead of the plant microbes may multiply so to avoid the multiplication of the microbes so we have to sterilize the nutrient medium as well as ex plant as well as uh, whatever uh, uh, the instruments we are using in this uh, tissue culture lab and uh, here the sterilization is of uh, two types surface sterilization which is uh, done for uh, the ex plants with uh, anti microbial chemicals so we just uh, uh, wash the ex plant on the surface with uh, anti microbial chemicals so that's why this is called surface uh, sterilization surface sterilization and remember that uh, the vessels and the culture medium or uh, the nutrient medium and the instruments whatever we are using should be completely sterilized and that's why this is uh, called complete sterilization and this complete sterilization is done with uh, the steam or dry heat or uh, using this alcohol of course we uh, you should not forget that uh, explant should not be used uh, uh, with this because the explant will die on the next one uh, you see this uh, uh, the tissue or the cell or the explant whenever uh, uh, you are uh, going for culturing that requires uh, aeration for respiration and uh, how that uh, aeration is provided and remember that uh, if it is uh, the culture medium is in a liquid state then uh, we keep uh, one paper uh, sorry filter paper over that uh, we keep the cell or uh, the tissue and uh, uh, or uh, the explant and uh, which will absorb the nutrients through that filter paper so that is called uh, filter paper bridge and suppose if uh, uh, some uh, explant uh, doesn't uh, have the ability to absorb it then uh, what we do is that we just uh, uh, okay introduce that explant into the medium and uh, the vials or uh, these uh, test tubes or the conical flasks whatever we are using will be uh, slowly shaken with shaking machines continuously and which will uh, provide air as uh, uh, they are moving in that uh, medium so these three are the main aspects 
which should be fulfilled before uh, uh, we go for uh, the tissue culture. So let us uh, now discuss about uh, the methods of plant tissue culture and there are two methods callus culture and explant culture and in the callus culture we will take either cell or tissue and uh, we transfer that cell or tissue onto the nutrient medium and uh, uh, under we provide aeration and so that uh, that due to presence of both auxins and cytokinins the cell or the tissue will rapidly multiply and form a mass of undifferentiated cells and this mass of undifferentiated cells is called callus and this callus is further uh, uh, okay it is uh, uh, transferred into okay another uh, uh, medium containing more amount of ba bap that is benzyl amino purin that is auxin uh, sorry that is cytokinin okay and uh, due to presence of the cytokinin what are formed uh, shoots will develop from this callus so cytokinin is uh, required for shoot differentiation and only shoots are formed without roots that's why now these uh, shoots will be separated and they are transferred into different uh, test tubes or petri dishes or to these uh, conical flasks containing more amount of uh, auxin now that is 2,4 dichlorophenoxyacetic acid and from the basis of uh, all these shoots now roots will develop and uh, now you can see that uh, the whole plant uh, will appear now in these test tubes or in the petri dishes so we call them as what plantlets and these plantlets uh, uh, which are uh, uh, grown in uh, the lab conditions are not immediately brought outside and we bring them outside uh, only after uh, adjusting the temperature and this is called uh, hardening and once they become uh, uh, hard, uh, that means once they become adjusted to the temperature, so they will uh, synthesize uh, one uh, cuticle layer on the surface, so that uh, now they can withstand uh, outside atmosphere or outside temperatures. So that's how uh, uh, the callus culture is done. And in the explant culture, we will take uh, uh, two types here. One is meristem culture. That means here uh, the meristems, where they are present, that is apical meristems, so that is shoot apical meristems, and the shoot apical meristems are present in uh, the terminal bird as well as axillary birds. And uh, these uh, uh, terminal birds or axillary birds uh, are excised from the plant and are surface sterilized, and then they are transferred into the medium. And uh, actually, what for? Uh, what is the significance of this meristem culture? This meristem culture is mainly employed for obtaining viral-free plants from the viral infected plant. What does it mean? Actually, the viral infections are uh, uh, systemic infections. Means what? They they will the virus will invade all parts of the plant body except these uh, apical meristems. There is shoot apical peristems. Why like that? This is due to presence of uh, high concentration of auxin and uh, as they are actively dividing, they do not let uh, the virus to invade them. That's why the shoot uh, that is meristem culture or shoot uh, meristem culture is employed for getting viral free plants from viral infected plants. And uh, uh, already some achievements we have and the scientists have developed uh, uh, viral free plants from of banana viral free plants of sugarcane viral free plants of potato through this meristem culture 
and the second type is what protoplast culture and if this protoplast culture when the, uh, this crossing of uh, uh, parents is not possible and we, when we fail generally intergeneric hybridization is very difficult one and uh, uh, in such cases what uh, the scientists have done is that they have taken uh, uh, the two cells from two different uh, plants. So, just for understanding, I wrote uh, uh, the cell is from plant A and the cell is from plant B. And this is the cell wall all of uh, plant A and this is cell wall of uh, plant B. And then what about this one? This is uh, the protoplast. The protoplasm surrounded by plasma membrane is called protoplast. Now, uh, uh, what they have done is that they have uh, uh, okay, introduced these two cells uh, into a liquid containing uh, these enzymes cellulases and pectinases. The cellulases and pectinases are cell wall uh, uh, digesting enzymes. That is why uh, they have lost uh, their cell walls. So you can see this uh, diagram. And what are left now only protoplasts are left are naked protoplasts. And now these uh, naked protoplasts of A and B, this is A and this is B, and they are treated with either sodium nitrate or polyethylene glycol, which is uh, abbreviated as PEG polyethylene glycol. Under the influence of these chemicals, uh, uh, what will happen? Both these protoplasts will fuse and form uh, a single uh, uh, protoplast and uh, which is called uh, hybrid protoplast. And uh, here uh, even the nuclear may fuse and uh, when nuclear are fused, it is called sink carry on. And suppose if uh, the nuclei are not fused and uh, uh, if uh, this uh, hybrid cell is having two nuclei, then it is called dicaryon. Or uh, sometimes in the dicaryon, uh, uh, okay, uh, one, uh, one of the nucleus will degenerate, then uh, we call that as what uh, uh, cytoplasmic hybrid because two cytoplasms are but one nucleus. So, uh, different things may be formed, whatever it may be, but uh, uh, that cell which is formed as a result of this fusion is called hybrid protoplast and this hybrid protoplast is uh, transferred onto the nutrient medium where it will multiply and form a callus and from the callus is now uh, uh, transferred into the medium containing uh, BAP and as a result of which uh, shoots will be formed. And now uh, uh, the shoots are transferred into the medium containing 2,4-D, uh, uh, that is auxin. Then uh, from the basis of uh, the shoots, uh, the roots will develop and as a result of which plantlets are formed. And those plants are called somatic hybrids, somatic hybrids. And we have to uh, mention one uh, Scientist here, the Carlson in 1972 obtained the first okay, somatic hybrid by crossing Nicotiana glaca with Nicotiana langsdorfi. So, this is uh, uh, the first somatic hybrid. So, I hope you are understanding what. Who are the parents of this first somatic uh, hybrid? First somatic hybrid. Okay. So, Nicotiana glaca and Nicotiana langsdorfi. And of course, the latter, uh, uh, some scientists, uh, of course, they have crossed these uh, uh, potato uh, and uh, tomato plant and obtained one uh, pomato. But unfortunately, this pomato does not have any desirable characters. Means what it uh, neither produced potatoes nor produced tomatoes, and it is of uh, no use for the people. But uh, uh, still, uh, they have uh, succeeded 
in crossing two different genera potato is solanum tuberosum and tomato is what lycopersicum esculentum so uh, though they belong to the same family but uh, belong to different genera so intergeneric hybridization okay so that is about uh, uh, this tissue culture now let us conclude uh, this uh, tissue culture topic by discussing about uh, uh, some merits or applications of uh, plant tissue culture and know that uh, uh, two important aspects we can uh, discuss here that is uh, one is rapid clonal propagation means what of course you know that in vegetative propagation the offspring look exactly like the their parents and we call them as clones and even uh, this tissue culture is a type of uh, a vegetative propagation only because uh, uh, the okay the offsprings or the children plants look exactly like the their parents so that's why these are called soma clones okay and the uh, river uh, through this tissue culture we can uh, produce not uh, uh, limited number of plants we can uh, raise large number of plants in short period in short duration and uh, this production of uh, thousands of plants through tissue culture okay is called micro propagation because uh, remember one thing uh, the size of these plants will be very small uh, okay till we keep them in uh, the test tubes and petri dishes of course they grow into normal plants once they are uh, transferred to the fields that's why this uh, uh, is called what micro propagation because of the size right and uh, uh, already i told you that they look exactly like the parents and that's why these are called soma clones and uh, uh, there are so many achievements and uh, uh, let us mention some of the examples of plants that are developed through this tissue culture or tomato banana and apple okay and uh, the most important one uh, is what pathogen free plants can be obtained uh, through meristem culture already we discussed because the meristems uh, contain uh, high concentration of auxins and uh, they are very active and uh, divide continuously that's why virus or uh, pathogens do not invade them and uh, through that uh, uh, okay beristem culture already a rice variety was developed which is resistant to tungro virus and leaf hopper so these are uh, uh, okay the applications of uh, plant tissue culture 